All right, welcome to the next video in the Air Game Framework tutorial. So in the last video, we looked at how to create services and how to communicate between them. In this one, we're gonna look at client controllers. If we go over the documentation here, it's almost identical to services, but it's on the client side. Now the, the reasoning for the naming convention here, controllers versus services, is really founding in itself in a, or founded in itself in in terms of web development, where a lot of time you have server side services, which kind of, you know, they they offer a service, a specific task or something, um, and then on the client you have controllers which help control tasks that are going on for the client. But in terms of their execution model and, and in terms of what they look like, they look identical. So in fact, the only change you'll really see, really the only difference you see between the two is in the service, you'll see the client table is defined right here. And in the controller, it's not. So that's really the only larger difference here in terms of structure of code. Otherwise, there's some injected properties differences in the fact that it, it is running on the client and not the server. So the injected properties, uh, we have controllers, so we can reference other controllers within our controller. We have modules, so we can reference our modules. We can reference our shared modules. And we also can reference services. So this is an interesting difference where uh, services cannot see controllers, but controllers can actually see services. And so controllers actually have the ability to invoke services and get responses back. And we'll look how that happens in the next video, but in this video, we're, we're gonna kind of skip over that piece yet. But this is probably one of the more powerful parts of the framework that allows us to communicate between the server and client. And then lastly, we have the player object, the local player injected as a property. In terms of methods, again, we have wrap module, which we talked about a little bit in the last video, which is more internal. We won't really cover that. And then we also have event registrations, uh, firing the event and connecting to the event. In terms of lifecycle, it's very, I mean, it, it is identical to services where we have the init method, which again is a blocking synchronous function that runs per controller at startup. And then once all those are done, we'll go into the start method. And this is asynchronous for all the controllers at the same time. In terms of writing custom methods and events, it's exactly the same as the services. But just for the sake of showing it, let's go into uh, VS Code here. Again, I have my uh, VS Code project open, I have Roho working, and I have it on as well within uh, Studio. Or this code right here. Now, if I create a controller, I just go under controllers, or I click, I click create, and then I'm gonna name it something simple like uh, test controller and then in my start method I can I can print out test controller started now because this is a client function if we just run this right now we're actually not going to see anything output and the reason for that again is because it's a client side local side uh, script running so we actually need to run play here or play to start a client to load our player into the game and now we can see it print out test controller started. Okay, so we can stop that, do our output. So that's pretty straightforward. So how do we communicate between controllers? Again, it's the same way as um, the services. So we'll create another controller called hello controller. We'll create a function called say hello. And we'll just use that to print hello. So after we started our test controller, we will do self.controllers. And again, now we can access all controllers based on name. So in this case, we have hello controller, and we want to call the, mo the method say hello. So now we go into studio, we put a click play here, and we see hello. So pretty straightforward, just like that. In terms of Registering events, it's the same way as services. So we do self register events. 
And we do this in the init function. That's very important. And let's say we have in our test controller an event called test. And then when we start, we'll wait a second and then we'll fire that event. And with the message, this is a test. And then back in our hello controller, we can hook up to that event in our start function. So we can do self connect, or sorry, self dot controllers dot test controller connect event. And our event name is test. And then hook that up to a function and print out the message. And maybe it's worth noting, but you can also connect an event you created within the same controller. So we could also do self connect event to that same event here. That's valid. We're allowed to do that. Now, I, in this case, we're firing the event right before connecting. So this would actually not capture that uh, firing of the event. If we put it here, it would. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to keep it like that and register or set, rather capture the event within the hello controller. So again, we register the event within test controller as test. We waited a second and we fired that event with a message, this is a test. Jumping over the hello controller when it started, we hooked up to that event test. We bound a function to it that takes the input message and outputs it to the output. So go back to studio, click play and wait a second. And then we'll see this is a test. Cool, so it worked. Stop that. Go back to our documentation here. And that is pretty much it in terms of our controllers. Now, there are some other aspects here in terms of accessing modules and things of that nature, but we already did that within our services video. Again, it's very much the same as that. All right, so our next video, we're gonna look at how to communicate between the server and the client using the APIs here uh, provided.